this will probably be the shortest video out of the last three pro plays videos because it's probably the easiest one to learn and understand. Your opponent's rotation is the other factor that's hidden from you in Clash Royale. Bringing appropriate cards to beat a deck in Clash Royale is always useful because when you can't count on something you're probably going to take a ton of damage. Meta decks are always constructed with this in mind and they're ready to face almost any win condition possible. However, even when your opponent does have a good counter, the best way to play around it can be counting their card rotation. Now, it's very very simple to do, but I'll go through it anyway. Firstly, you'll need to identify their best counter to your win condition. Once you've done that, you can count their cards one by one until they're back to it. Four cards later, and they're able to get the counter again so you can hopefully attack within that time. If you're an immensely cheap deck, then you can easily get four cards around before the normal cycle of your opponent. Using this technique, you can figure out when your opponent has no counter to a normal card. For example, if your opponent only has ground cards in hand, then you can punish with a minion horde. This may not be your win condition per se, however you've worked at your opponent's hand and have punished this really easily. This can be helpful if your opponent has a really good deck against your own, and if your default game plan is being countered, because you can get damage in any way. You might not get direct damage, but you might probably get a good trade if your opponent doesn't have an efficient answer to something like a minion horde. This was a big part of my hard counters video recently, and will certainly help you out in these difficult matchups. Counting 4 cards can become a complex task when Elixir starts to ramp up in double Elixir time, so there is an easier but less effective method for starting out. Your opponent may be playing cards in order with you, so it could result in them playing a 5 card deck. This makes your life a whole lot simpler, because you know what's coming next. If they played, say, a Valkyrie after a Bomber, then you know after they play a Bomber, a Valkyrie is in hand again. Once more, this isn't entirely accurate all of the time, but if you've missed cards, then you can make a guess based on this knowledge at the very least. If you're up in Elixir, it's sometimes worth to instantly cycle two win conditions in a very short amount of time. If your opponent doesn't cycle with you, then you're in for damage again. If you're against a really good opponent, they may realize that you're about to do this. Hence, they might apply pressure so you have to defend. Now, here's your decision. You have to either push in with all of your Elixir, knowing that your opponent doesn't have their preferred counter, or you defend and lose this opportunity to push. It's down to your judgment and figuring out which choice will get you more damage is a skill in itself. Now, we've spoken a lot about cycle decks, but not every deck is a cycle deck. So, how do you get that counter card out of hand without out cycling? We go back to baiting. Every deck has an element of bait to some extent, so here's an example again. You can bait a poison with a goblin hut, and then push in with graveyard and freeze when the poison's out of hand. There are a ton of examples I could put in here for other decks, but that's another way to use cycle to your advantage. Once their counter is out of hand, you then push in and get a ton of damage. This can help you in beating those hard counter matchups, as I referenced before but it also helps with a few more specific things. You can know your opponent's ability to punish to know when to invest. If your opponent's hand consists of no quick damage dealer, then you can invest your tank and know that they will have to play defense. This means that you won't have to spend elixir defending a punish play and can instead build that huge push that every beatdown deck desires. Bait decks need to know all about cycle, especially on the spells. This is possibly the easiest one to practice counting cycle with because you only have to track the spell really. Once they use a spell on one of your bait cards, you'll most likely have your punish card in hand to attack. Now you've actually offset your opponent's spell in their cycle to not be in hand with your punish play. However, they are able to hold on to it, of course. Any deck that has a consistently good counter in the meta right now will benefit from knowing the card rotation of their opponent. The log bait example works well for this, but any deck that has a popular counter in the meta right now are aided by card counting. Siege decks will always be using this skill to its maximum potential, because it's very difficult to break an expo through tanks and they would rather break through the supporting units when a tank isn't in hand. Decks that are able to produce really efficient damage, for example dealing out a thousand damage for free elixir, are good for counting cards. If you know that your opponent can't block a bandit, then just throw it at the river and that's an easy dash for you to obtain. Overall, it's all about the one-dimensional decks that want to use this strategy heavily. With an alternate win condition, you can just rely on that instead. But if your deck does one thing, you'll need to know the skills to get through damage against a bad matchup. So yeah, that is mostly it for counting rotation in about 4 minutes. When you know what's in your opponent's hand, then you can punish with whatever they can't defend. If you happen to lose track of their cycle, you should play it like the start of a game. Just sit back and try to defend to start with, and cycle around until you regain an idea of what's in their hand. This skill is something that's very easy to come back from when you mess up, because they only have 8 cards so there can only be so many possibilities. You can practice this skill in literally every game, especially when you run certain decks. Again, decks like log bait work really well because that's the whole premise to win. You bait the log, knowing it's out of cycle, and then you punish with a high DPS of the goblin barrel. I've said this to end off pretty much every video recently, but once you practice it enough, you get a natural feel of your opponent's current hand. 
practice and their memorization is key for most skills in Clash Royale. But yeah, that ends off our series of pro plays. We covered Elixir first, then beating Howard matchups, and now card rotation. If you'd like to watch those videos, they'll be linked in the top right at some point. If you're interested in more CR strategy, then be sure to subscribe to see all videos that I post. Apart from that, boys, peace.